Hey, what's up, amigos? Welcome back. Hey, look, got news for you. The tramp is very, very, very sick. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had some rain. Well, we get rain every day, but we had some really heavy, heavy, heavy rain, okay? And what happened was it was so freaking heavy that I didn't know it, but I ended up with water in my gas tank. Yeah, it rained so freaking hard that it got somehow, I guess, into the vent of the cap or something like that and just ended up with water in the tank, like I just said, and I didn't know it until I went to go fire the bike up. It ran pretty good for a little bit, but all it did was burn the residual gasoline that was still left in the carburetor and in the fuel line, but once that water got to it, boom, dead bike. But once I figured it out, I went ahead and drained the gas out of the gas tank, and I pulled the bowl off the carburetor right here, and I dumped whatever was left in there, and it was pretty murky looking. It looked like dirty dishwater or something like that. And I cleaned out the gas lines and ended up putting new gas in here and it fired right up But it didn't run very well. Let me show you what it sounds like it Sounds like one sick bird and that's with the enrichener out too So obviously what I'm gonna have to do is pull this sucker off right here take it apart clean it up Apparently the water did some damage to the carb that it won't straighten itself out because it ran perfect before it got water in the tank So you guys get to see me uh, Go through this thing and uh, I never did a carburetor video before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did but not rebuilding one so without any further ado, I'm gonna get busy. I'm gonna get this thing off and uh Well, that was relatively painless to remove. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is that I need to get some carburetor cleaner so I can clean off the outside of the carburetor body before I, you know, take it apart. And I don't have any. So I'm gonna run down to Fazio's, get me a can, and uh, heck, won't you guys come too? Okay, I thought I was gonna ride a motorcycle down there, but we've been having these pop-up thunder showers that's come out of nowhere. And the wind is blowing out of the southeast and the clouds are moving fast and there's a huge monsoon headed this way so i went ahead and got the tramp all covered up so that i don't have any more problems with water in the gas tank and on top of that the intake manifold is wide open so without any further ado we're going to get down to fazio's while i have you guys in the truck with me i might as well give you a little bit of an update as far as the garage is concerned last week the construction guy came out to take a look at the property and we got to talking and it looks like this week which right now this is sunday and i don't know when this video is going to get uploaded but it looks like this week they're going to come and start laying dirt and you know to level the ground and uh, so they can pour the slab and stuff like that so i thought i just might throw that in there for you guys to hear because you guys are still asking me about you know what's the update on the garage which i don't blame you man because it has been such a while because it feels like it's been almost a year so it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel so there you go at least for right now <laughs> Yep, I have to say that was a good idea not to ride the bike, so <laughs> let's get in here. These guys usually have a little bit of everything around here, so, uh, you know, it's a little bit of hardware, a little bit of grinding material, a little bit of welding material, and some automotive stuff. And let's see, we're in the automotive now. Super S carburetor cleaner, okay. Maybe three. There we go. Yeah. Oh, good one. Thanks a lot. Okay, we got what we need. And let's get back to the house and make uh, a good carburetor out of a bad carburetor right now. And look, it looks like the rain is slacked off. So, <laughs> I guess I'm getting out of here just in time. 
Okay, we're back home, and it looks like it didn't rain here, at least not yet, but there is a system I did see to the south, and it looks like it's on its way here. So without me yammering my hammer, I'm gonna go ahead and get this carburetor cleaned off before I take it into the house. But don't tell the missus I did that, okay? <laughs> because uh, quite frankly, I'm tired of working on a slab. Okay, that's one entire can being sprayed on the carburetor and I'm gonna get another can out and spray it down some more and I'm pretty sure those of you who are watching may have a better idea. I'm sure you do. I'm just lazy. I don't feel like taking a rag and wiping it down. I'm gonna spare you the details of me cleaning it off some more with the second can, but you guys get the idea. Um, so, on to the next thing. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna take this into the house because I just thought about, I'm gonna to have to take it apart, right? And I know that there's some residual gasoline in the bowl and that stuff's gonna to have to come out. And I'm pretty sure the missus is gonna know I had this stuff in the house because the whole house is gonna smell like gasoline. So we'll just do it right here on the front porch. And uh, what I got right here is obviously my carb. Uh, and what you're mainly gonna to want to take one of these apart is a screwdriver. But since I don't have the air breather off, I still got a little bit of more wrenching to do because uh, this is kind of in the way right here. So, excuse me a second. Now in case if any of you were wondering what kind of air breather I'm running, it's just whatever came on the iron head originally when I brought it home. It's meant to fit a Zenith Bendix. Anyway, but the backing plate had been modified to fit a CV carburetor type bolt pattern that's on the face of this. And also, Lowbrow Customs style backing plate that holds the carburetor to the intake manifold. So. In case anybody asks questions down in the comments what kind of air breather system I got, well, yeah, that's what's on the tramp. Okay, the next order of business is, well, what I usually like to do is to get the enrichner cable off. And you kind of got to be a little patient. You just take your 9 16 wrench and undo that little hex right there. But it doesn't want to turn freely. But one trick you can do is somehow pull this boot back because it's the boot that kind of keeps it from turning freely. But if you can get this back, you'll be able to turn this by hand. See? Like that. And it comes out nice and easy like that. Alright, like I said, all you need now here forward is a stubby screwdriver or not necessarily a stubby but a Phillips head screwdriver and you can start wherever you want to start at I typically like to start by taking the bowl off and there are four Phillips head screws on each corner so we're gonna go ahead and remove that first should come out about like that. Okay, a little quick uh, lesson on a general idea of how these things work. Okay, uh, maybe you don't know how a carburetor works or the principles behind it, but this is your intake manifold side and this is the air breather side, okay? so. When you turn your gas on, all carbureted bikes, or well, Harleys that is, they have a petcock. And so when you turn your fuel on, the line comes down and it goes into this little spigot right here and it fills up the bowl. As the bowl is filling up, the gas level will come up against these floats 
and it'll come up like that and it'll shut off the fuel flow that's coming out through here with the little needle valve and so it's basically the same idea as what's in your toilet you know exact same idea this right here is your throttle as you can see that butterfly opening and whenever you hit that throttle as you can see this there's this little stick right here the little push rod goes down in here it pushes against the diaphragm that basically sucks gas out of the bowl and up this little stem right here that little stem comes up through one of these holes and it has a hole that points that way and it basically shoots gas down the carburetor okay now as air is flowing through here while your engine's running it is pulling fuel out of that bowl and it comes up through this little idle jet hole which you can't see which by default with all the air and gas being mixed together it creates a perfect mixture as it is set according to the jets that you have that is relative to the engine size that you have and as you get to 3000 rpms the air is flowing faster through here and what's happening is that air will also go through here and through its proper passageways and will enact this diaphragm that's spring loaded there's a spring in here that's sandwiched between the diaphragm and the top here but so it basically keeps this cylinder all the way down and if you notice there is a pin right there as the rpms are higher there's a vacuum that happens through this little contraption right here that pulls this up right here and then it allows more fuel to enter into the motorcycle through this main jet so this is basically it's opening up the main jet and it delivers more fuel to the bike as it's needed at the higher rpms so that's basically how that works so uh without me blabbering my head even more which i hope you got the idea um i'm gonna go ahead and start taking more of this stuff apart okay the next thing i want to do is i want to get this float out of here and basically your float is held on by a pin that goes through these two yokes so we've got to get that out of there in order to get this float off and it should come right out just like that and there's the little needle valve right there that I was telling you about I'm gonna set that aside oh and may I also say this is an older carburetor okay and so the, the later model CVs you had to uh, put these pins in in a certain direction because one of these holes was smaller than the other and it kind of it's like a press fit it kind of holds in there real good and if you have one of those you have to be very careful not to bust the ears off of one of these if you push it in the wrong way or like just getting them out or even just putting it in so that's that okay another thing I want to do is I'm going to get this cap off and I'm going to inspect that diaphragm to see if it's in good shape there okay it looks like the diaphragm doesn't have any tears in it no holes or anything like that and it's also uh, I don't see any burn marks on there so it seems like everything's good this is the needle I was telling you about that operates the the main jet basically like I said at the lower rpms this thing is compressed and this needle is seated down inside the main jet shutting the fuel off to the main jet and it's just operating off your slow jet or your idle jet as some people want to say and as the rpms get higher the, the vacuum gets more and more so this thing goes up and it's allowing fuel to come out the main jet adding more fuel to the air that's being forced in there and it looks like it's all good to go so i guess uh, i'll be reusing this thing which i'm kind of glad because i think these things are about 50 bucks a piece and i really don't want to buy another one okay next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the jets so in order to get the main jet out you can either use a 5 16 box wrench or a flathead screwdriver all right it seemed to work out just fine okay i'm going to go ahead and remove the emulsion tube with a small crescent wrench all right now i'm going to want to remove my idle jet or slow jet and your slow jet's going to be located right in there and very patiently put pressure against it and turn because it's very easy to strip these things out and you don't want to strip them out they're made of brass and they can strip out very easily there i felt it come loose there it is right there 
And last but not least, I'm going to remove the air mixture screw. I can't remember how many turns I have it out, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, turn this thing clockwise. I'm going to count my rotations so I, I will remember how many rotations I need to come back out. And I'll explain that later as to why that is. All right, that's one and three quarters rotation. And you want to be real gentle when you do that because you can really, really mess up the seat on that carburetor body. Also, you will mess up the uh, point of your mixture screw too. And that's it right there. And if I remember right, there's a little spring in here, but I can't seem to get it because it's stuck. <laughs> you're gonna get you a little paper clip like that. You're gonna make a little tool out of it. Gonna straighten it out like that. Grab the very tip of it and fold it over like this. All right, that's perfect. Shove it down in that little hole. You get it inside the spring and you push it off to one side and then you pull up like this. And there's the spring. Okay, now it's tomorrow and uh, you know, as you can tell, I got a different shirt on and I have a fresh battery. And so we're gonna proceed further. So what next? Where did I leave off? But one thing I didn't take apart yesterday which happens to be the accelerator pump diaphragm which is located underneath this cap right here. It's got these three screws. Again, take your Phillips screwdriver. And that thing should pop up just like that. And there she is. I went ahead and bought a rebuild kit anyway. So why not use brand new parts since I got the old parts out. I mean, you can't lose that way, you know? But one of the things that I like to do before putting new parts in is I like to take a can of carburetor cleaner like this, like I was just using with a straw on the end, and I like to spray it through all the different passages that's in the carburetor body just to be sure that it's clear of crud or buildup or anything like that. You know, basically I put my straw in like say a hole and I hit the button, and if I see the cleaner coming out another way, I know that I've, you know, got clearance or I've got, you know, good passage. All right, and I see a little bit of, you know, filthiness on the inside of the bowl, so I'll just take this and I'll just spray it out, which mine's coming to clean pretty good. And the little cap that went on top of it, I'm just gonna spray it down. And basically what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna find every little passageway and just blow it out real good. And, you know, just like I did with the bowl. That seems to be working. All right, so there's a little O-ring right here on this cap. I'm gonna pull that out of there. And then there's a seal on this bowl and it looks like it's got some miles on it. So I'm just gonna pull it off of here. You've got your slide, your diaphragm slide or whatever it's called. And here's your needle and it goes down inside this little hole and you put it in first. And it's gonna look like that. And then you're gonna take this little thing, which I don't know what it's called and you're just going to drop this in here on top of that. And then you're going to take your slide and you're going to move it down inside the body and it only goes in one way. It's pretty dummy proof. And I got lucky the first time, so I guess I'm not a dummy. <laughs> and one thing you want to be sure of is you see this groove down here in the body? Well, you want to make sure that this diaphragm is very nicely put down inside this groove. Your cap with the spring on it and insert it down in here like that. And by feel, you're just going to have to make sure that when you put this cap on, that the diaphragm is evenly placed in the groove that's in the body. If you just wiggle it around like this, until you eventually you see no, no more gap between the cap and the body, that pretty much means that you have your diaphragm in the groove. And basically, you're not going to pinch the diaphragm when you put the screws on. So I'm going to mess with that a little bit because it's kind of tricky but you'll know when you got it in there because you won't have any gap between the cap and the body. Oh, I think I just got lucky. I'm just gonna hold it like that and I'm gonna take my uh, screws and I'm just gonna put them in here. Like I said, 
I've been provided with some brand new parts, so I'm going to use the brand new parts. So I got a new diaphragm, and I've also got a new spring to go with it. Here's that little O-ring. It's going to go right here in this little counterbore. There, got that in there like that. Now this diaphragm has a like a little bit of a lip right here, and it's perfectly flat right here. So the lip is going to go down inside this groove right here. So you just take this thing and just lay it right there. And it is a little tricky that you don't lose your spring or the spring don't jump off. So you gotta be a little patient with it. I've done this a thousand times. So if I get it on the first try, that's why. And I don't always get it on the first try. So let's see how this goes. Just put this on top like that. And put your screws in. Voila! I found my proper seal for the bowl. And I'm just going to lay it down in here in that little groove right there. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is my slow jet right here. And just, you know, just for good measure. And here's my main jet, which I can see straight through it. And like I said, for good measure, just fine. And my emulsion tube, as you can see, it looks like... Wait a second. I think I found the reason why it ran like crap. You see how you guys can't see straight through that thing? There's something in there. Whatever trash that was came flying right out of there. And the perforated holes, I can see straight through them. I see daylight through them, so they're good. But like I said, for good measure, I'm just gonna do that and boom, it's nice and clean. Good deal. So now I wanna put them on the carb. Emulsion tube goes right on there. Not too tight, you're messing with brass and aluminum and it's really easy to mess this stuff up. Take my main jet, which goes on top of my emulsion tube. All right, and then there's my slow jet, which goes right down in this small hole right here. All right, it's bottomed out. You don't have to torque these things down. I mean, they'll, they'll stay in place. If you torque them down too much, you'll never get them back out. Or I don't want to say never, but you're going to have a time getting them back out. So always be gentle because there's going to come a time when you're going to want to mess with these again. If you have one, that is. We're also provided with a brand new needle valve and a boot and some other seals that I don't need because, like I said, uh, not all CVs are created equal. So it looks like I have more than enough than what you know as far as what I need. I'm going to hook it onto my float right here like so all right there it is dangling right there and it should just fall right in there like that your pin your hinge pin that's gonna go on there and i just kind of put this in here like this all right and it's in there there's a hole right here behind the float and this stem right here goes through that hole and so that's pretty much how i know how to put this thing together also don't forget that this little push rod it also needs to go down in this little hole right here because that's where your accelerator pump diaphragm is okay I still have to put my idle mixture screw in so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick this is my little idle mixture screw this is the spring that goes over top of it like that and then I'm going to put it down this little tube right here, just like that. And then I'm going to take my small screwdriver and I'm going to run it down until I feel it barely bottom out. Okay. Okay, with my screw ran all the way down, I don't know if there's enough light for you to see, but there's a little hole right here and that little needle is all the way up in that hole. Like I think I said earlier, that while this thing is idling, fuel is coming out of that hole. So this is your air mixture screw, like I said before. And so as you saw earlier, before I took it out, I ran it all the way down to the bottom, but I counted my rotations and I saw that it was one and three quarters of a rotation. So I know that's where I want my mixture screw to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it out. One and three quarters of a rotation. One and three quarters. Okay. That's where I want to be. Okay, boom. Got my air breather on. Got my enrichner put back in. Only thing left to do now is to put this thing back on the tramp 
and see how well it does but guess what I'm not going to do that just now but you'll see it in a couple of frames because um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick it up again the next day okay so I'll see you guys the next day okay here it is now several days later and the rain won't let up and I still have not put the carburetor onto the motorcycle so I'm just going to end it right here except hold on uh, after you hear me say this because there's something else coming up um, however I am going to end it right here and I promise you the next video you see the tramp will be running okay so the method I use to redo this carburetor I've done this a thousand times and it works every single time now that's just how I do it I'm not saying you should do it that way try doing it the orthodox way or you can try it my way if you want to I don't care but if it doesn't work out I didn't tell you to do it that way but that's how I do it and it works out pretty good so the next video uh, I promise you you'll see the tramp running with that carburetor and uh, yeah anyway <laughs> thanks for watching guys and on to the next frame check this out Check it out, amigos. <laughs> I thought maybe I would, uh, you know, show you there's a start happening for the garage. So here's a little bit of an update. We have dirt. So before too long, the construction crew will be out here. They'll be laying the dirt. There'll be a slab and there'll be a garage going up before we know it. So finally, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We have something tangible to look at. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just about as excited as some of you guys may be by now. So I guess I'm just going to end it here. So as always, guys, you guys keep the rubber side down and just be good to yourselves. Thanks a lot.